data point as the scene. Okay, thank you. Hello there, I'm uh, Vignesh Sundaresan. Uh, yeah, I know it's a difficult name. You can just call me Vignesh or Vig. Um, thank you for having me at uh, M0. This is very exciting. Uh, I'm here to talk about a little about Lendroid, uh, which is the project we are uh, working on right now. Um, in my previous life, I have been working with crypto finance for a, for a while now. So uh, I, I co-founded a company called BitAxis. Back in 2013, we made Bitcoin ATMs. And then uh, I pro we proceeded to think about remittances in, in different countries, uh, did not work out. And uh, we, we, we kept working on interesting financial products. We wanted to make derivatives happen. It was just too early. And uh, so while going through all this thought process, what really struck um, my mind was there is, there is this uh, core idea, which is, which is credit which is very important to, to design complex financial instruments. So without, say for example, without ab able to borrow a token, if you really hate a, a specific project and you want to go short on it, without able to borrow their tokens, it's not, it's not really possible. So today you see that all, uh, there are different projects which have a very huge valuation, but it's, it's one of the reasons is because th there is no, other side selling pressure on them, right? And in the traditional markets, usually you'll find that there is, there is this borrowing and then shorting going on, right? So Lendroid attempts to do that. So Lendroid is an open protocol. So Lendroid itself is it's not a company. It's, it's not a central company which does KYC, which it, it does not hold people's funds. Uh, it is trust independent and it, it is going to enable various other applications for, for that you want to use credit on their own, uh, on their own applications uh, through interacting with our protocol. To start with and to bootstrap our network of, with the lenders, what we are actually attempting is to enable an interesting use case, which is uh, leverage. Uh, you can be able to hold leveraged trade positions, and also you can go short on, on various ERC20 tokens. Right? So why are we doing this? Why are we doing margin trading? It's because today, if you look at the market, there is a market for margin trading. If you go on Bitfinex today, you will find there is $500 million worth of active loans uh, combined in all tokens. Um, and, and there are people who are, who are doing margin trading already. And it's one of the first real use cases where crypto lending is, is really happening. So that's, that's why we want to target that. Um, the infrastructure is going. We have more decentralized uh, exchange protocols that are working now. So there is OX, there is Kyber, all these guys who are enabling order books to happen. So it's easy to integrate with them. And there is a need because if we want to move away from more of a central operator to a decentralized operator uh, for token exchanges, right? Without without this this component, with this missing part. Uh, a lot of day traders might not want to move away from central exchanges, right? And and there is this requirement where, say, Mellon, for example, is a th the fund managers they don't have access to leverage today. And with Lendroid, what what can happen is there they could uh, collateralize the portion of their uh, position and pick up a leverage and and go long on something or go short on something, right? So that that becomes very very new, uh, and also. Uh, for example, the fund managers can decide to, say, allocate a portion of their, uh, their tokens into an interest-bearing account, right? So that's not done yet. So, so today, if you look at how central exchanges are organized, so it's almost like a black box in the middle. So there is the lender, the, the lender on, on one side, there is the margin trader on the other side, and the central exchanges actually handle all, all the functions. Uh, we classify the functions in three things three things uh, primarily, so that there is liquidity related, so they make the UI, they bring in the people, they encourage uh, the users, there is, I'll, I'll go for the margin account. So if you, if you look at the margin account, there is going to be the margin account monitoring, which is a computationally heavy process, and there is also custodian of funds, which is they hold users' funds, and it's a, it's a laborious process, it's a, it's a very, um, tricky process and, and actually exchanges hate it because they don't make any money by holding people's money. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge 
burden and responsibility, they make money here and they make money here, right? So they will be happy to do this, where with Lendroid, the idea is that we split um, the, 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 the functions of exchange into three parts separately. We take the handling of user funds onto the, onto the Ethereum blockchain, which it's really good at doing, and we, we enable two additional off-chain uh, players. So these players are symbiotic to the, to the ecosystem. So there is this lender who is going to lend us, uh, lend us assets, the margin trader who is going to borrow and trade, but there are these two players, which are the Wrangler and, and the relayers, they're going to enable this platform, right? And, and if you look at the relayers, they will look similar to what, what you see as exchanges today. So they are UIs. This idea was inspired uh, and extended from what OX uh, is doing, where all the orders from offers from the lenders goes on to the relayers, and margin traders can just discover them. So this process becomes off-chain, which is which means that it is, it is not very costly all the time to manage the offers. And the Wrangler is the interesting part, which I'm going to talk about in a second, right? So if you look at the relayers itself, what happens is they, they, the relayers hold and aggregate and, and they become the UI for these offers. On-chain transactions are very slow, quite costly. So to manage offers, say if you want to delete an offer, um, put it up at a different interest rate, if you are doing everything on chain, it's costly. So that's where relayers are useful because they really cut down the cost of maintaining these offers. Uh, the funds still are managed only by the smart contract, but they become the people who display, the aggregate and display the whole, whole system. And so margin trader, what he does is he actually deposits a collateral, starts by depositing a collateral, and then he can pick up uh, a available loan from the relayer. Uh, once he has the uh, borrowed capital, he can then interact with various decentralized order books in order to change his positions in his, in his account. So these, these positions that he's changing stays in the smart contract, so he's not able to withdraw. That means that once we lock what he can do with his borrowed capital, we can also offer leverage, which means if you have a collateral that's worth $100, we can actually offer you to pick up a loan which is worth $250, right? Because you're not able to withdraw, and, and we are also monitoring your trade positions. So, and, and if it goes unhealthy, we are able to intervene, right? So in this case, in this best case scenario, the, the margin trader is going to change his positions, and if he's happy with the small profit that he has made uh, because of the change in the prices, right? He can, he can get out, he can withdraw the profit, he can uh, get back his collateral, and then he repays the loan too, right? But this does not happen all the time. There can be a situation where he makes a loss. In that case, he, what he can do is he can deposit more uh, money into the system and then uh, like close the loans. But in the worst case scenario where the margin trader totally wants to abandon uh, the whole uh, account, that is when the Wranglers come in, right? So Wranglers are, are the interesting um, novel part of, of the Lendright protocol. So Wranglers, what they do is they, they are looking at all these margin accounts that are, that are inside uh, the Lendright system, right? So Wranglers, imagine Wranglers to be people who are, uh, uh, they are like exchanges today who are running this computation. So they are looking at all these margin accounts, the positions the, each margin trader is holding. They also have access to the data from the external market. So what they do is off-chain, they're going to compute the, the margin levels of all these accounts all the time. So they will do it all, all the time. And once they find that there is a margin account which is, which is unhealthy, the, uh, it has reached a liquidation level, what they do is they, they instruct the smart contract that they've discovered something, right? So what the smart contract then, then does is uses a data feed just so that as to make sure that whatever the Wrangler has reported uh, corroborates with, with what's happening in the external market, right? But the Oracle does not actually liquidate the account, which would mean we depend too much on the Oracle, and liquidations are not possible decentralized uh, because we, we market orders are impossible. So what happens is it starts a collateral auction where not just one Wrangler, multiple Wranglers, can attack the same same margin account with their own offers. 
So what they can choose to do is say, if, if a margin account owes 100 Ethereum, they need not repay the whole 100 Ethereum, each Wrangler. They can decide to repay a portion of the, of the loan back, right? And for that, what, what they do is they get back the, pro the, the similar proportion of positions in the margin account, right? In addition to the positions, they also can request collateral. So this is where the game is, because the, like when you repay the loan, it's like uh, going for a um, land auction, where you go and say, okay, this is how much I'm going to pay for this piece of land, right? That, in this case, you'll, you'll, you'll say you're going to repay and get a portion of the positions. In addition to that, you, because the positions might not be as uh, the, the value of the positions might not be as good as what you paid for, you get some additional collateral, right? And that is, that is, the, that is the portion where the, the, the wrangler starts making profit, right? So for, for monitoring this whole system and, and keeping these margin accounts healthy, these guys make a profit on the collateral. And in addition, there is also this Lendroid support tokens which, which power this whole system. So we talked about four players, right? So there is the lender, the margin trader, who are enjoying the protocol, who are using the protocol to, say, make money to, to, to margin trade, to lend, etc. But the guys, uh, relayers and the wranglers, they are just enabling the protocol. Now what is happening is this whole uh, protocol is non-rent seeking, meaning the, the protocol itself does not take a percentage of every transaction or something. But what, what it does is that it, it allows the lenders and the borrowers to pay a fee to the wranglers and the relayers who are helping the system, right? So all, all the transactions happen from one person to another instead of happening, say, between a central company. So this way, what happens is this, this, econ uh, this private economy, uh, official currency becomes LSTs. So that's the overall idea of LSTs. And the, the larger idea of what we are trying to do is that we go from here, we start from the margin trading bit uh, and build this global shared liquidity pool, right? And with, with lending offers on, on all these relayers, what happens is that, that instantly we have a shared lending pool. The lenders on these uh, sh shared lending pool, what they care about is, is that th their capital is safe and they can earn a small interest, right? So they don't really necessarily care too much about what it's being used for if it's being managed properly. So what, what can happen in the future is we can start lending against everything that can be tokenized, right? And we are building the leverage trade, leverage trade and short selling, but people can start building other products on top of us because we are just a protocol. Um, we are thinking about interest-bearing accounts. We're thinking about collateralized uh, loans, which, which are withdrawable and uh, line of credit applications, right? So these are some of the things you can do with Lendroid. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Vignesh. Next up is the first panel of the conference, uh, moderated by George Hallam. Yes, yes, very exciting about digital asset universes.